I'm ranking David Mitchell's novels today, and I am super excited because I am a David Mitchell fanatic. I love all of his novels, and I already feel the anxiety of having to rank these one through eight coming onto me because I would recommend all these novels for just about anyone. So let's get into it. The first novel that we have to place is Black Swan Green, by, which is a novel about Jason Taylor, a, a young man. It's a coming of age story in 1982 England and, and around that time period. And this novel has blends a little bit of magical realism minutes but it really focuses on adolescence and growth and you know maybe some historical events happening in England it's written very well it's very fun to read and I I'm it's not the worst but it's also not the, his best book so I'm gonna place it probably around number five so next we have Slade House by David Mitchell which kind of explains a lot of a lot more about the horologists if I'm saying that correctly it kind of dives into a little bit more the Fan, uh, the Mitchell, we'll put this here for now, the, the Mitchell verse, but, and it's written as more of a ghost or haunting story, but, and I think it started out on Twitter. And because of that, I'm honestly going to throw this and down at number eight. It was kind of a letdown. It's a shorter book. And when I'm looking at the rest of the novels that we have here, I don't think that anything is going to be worse than Slade House, but I'm, I'm willing to change. A lot of these picks are going to change as we're moving forward. So next is number nine dream. And this is Number nine dream is a hard one because at times I'm sure if you've read this it can be a little bit jumpy Number nine dream can be hard to follow has some really good moments has some very odd moments to it And yo before I move on post your list down in the comments below What are you, what's your one through eight ranking if rankings if you've read all of David Mitchell's books? I'm very excited to see them But I feel like we're gonna have very similar lists most of the time that a lot of the worst ones will be at the bottom And a lot of the better ones are going to be at the top when the novel is a fever dream and like and like Mitchell is trying to do in number nine dream because it it, it a number nine dream kind of picks up where ghost ridden left off and number nine dream d mitchell's trying to do some acrobats and it can be very painful to read sometimes and i think if we're talking about objective writing i think he did more with number nine dream in terms of literary quality than black swan green but i also think that we have i'm going to have to rate it below it because i re recently read all of david mitchell's books again i think last year and number nine dream was still for my third time reading it it's still um even though it, when we compare both are coming of age both are coming of age novels right we have jason taylor and eg miyaki and i i feel like black swan green captures a little bit more magic a little bit more clarity and is a better performance by mitchell so next we have bone clocks by david mitchell which really is where the mitchell verse begins and just cracks open we learn about the horologists and all these different things happening out in the time wave and there are multiple timelines and multiple character point of views in bone clocks it's one of his other than cloud atlas his most ambitious complex and honestly best novels and so i'm going to actually put bone clocks and cloud atlas at two right now and we're going to at the end of this video have a discussion about which one should be number one um, because i feel like these are the two uh the clear top two in my opinion so next we have the thousand we have the thousand autumns of jacob desoit and you know what's really funny about this book a couple years ago my grandma who uh who was 92 got into a car accident well someone hit them and she ended up dying in this car accident a very tragic way to go at 92 years old having some random person on their cell phone kill you but whatever um and the canadian justice system made it so that person never had to go to jail but the justice system in japan though in this book is very complex and this is a one of the best historical well excuse me the reason i meant i mentioned my grandma is that she really loved this book she had read this book and i think a couple years before she had died she had the and i didn't know this but then i went to her i went you know went to the funeral and i was at their house and i saw the book and i asked my grandpa i was like did she like this book and then my and he's like i don't know ask your um ask your aunt marty so i asked my aunt and she said that uh, my grandma really liked that book so anyway so this is a another coming of age novel where jacob has to sail off to japan to make money so that he can go back and and marry the the love of his life and have money and make her and her father proud so jacob's out on this journey and he is doing well he starts off very well but then he gets trapped in a love affair with a samurai doctor's daughter and this this novel takes place in 1799 and it is a tumultuous book this book makes your kind of insides turn a little bit it's like oh my god like at the times and a lot of the the scenes i'm not here to spoil too much or anything in this series but it is a very crazy book and i'm actually going to rank this one at number three on my list 
Next, we have David Mitchell's most recent book, which is Utopia Avenue, which is about a band named Utopia Avenue. And it goes through their whole life cycle from a starting band. In every single chapter, we get a different point of view from one of the, the characters, you know, I think the three, the guitarist, the singer, and the bassist. And it is a really good novel. Honestly, I'm going to give this one at number three and the A Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoe at number four because Utopia Avenue was really good and Mitchell put a lot of effort into the novel. I have a book review on this channel if you guys want to check that out, but I feel like Mitchell showed up and cemented his legacy in a sense with this book that he had been publishing books for about 20 years at that point. And that's when, you know, some authors go downhill. And this book was a solid book in the catalog. If you can see, it's number three on my list. It was ambitious. It played a lot with the uh, Mitchell verse that had been created. It brought back a lot of characters, a lot of homages, and it was pretty well executed. We got Jerry Garcia. I mean, it's, it's an absolute beautiful book. Everyone needs to go check out Utopia Avenue. So last on the list before we uh, start ranking the top two is Ghost Ridden. And Ghost Ridden is a very interesting book. It it's you know takes place from a bunch of different perspectives, but it for sure has to fall in at the number seven slot because a lot of the chapters honestly don't aren't very coherent. I can read hard books, I can understand what's happening, but a lot of the chapters are way too ambitious, just like out of the out of this park ambitious. And this is his first novel, and it just really has some bad execution across the board. And I enjoy this novel. I enjoy to see where the whole Mitchell verse started, and a lot of the characters that are in this you know show up in later books. But it is. Time to move forward and figure out what is David Mitchell's best book. And most people obviously are going to say Cloud Atlas because Cloud Atlas is, you know, David Mitchell's most read book by far. But a lot of Mitchell fans will say The Bone Clocks because The Bone Clocks have a very, the writing is just as good as Cloud Atlas, but it brings in a whole different element. It starts turning into a fantasy series and a lot of crazy elements and time jumps start to happen that Cloud Atlas maybe doesn't have. Cloud Atlas has this a very, a very good feeling because it's about soulmates and love and um, uh, continue uh, the reincarnation at some level and finding each other in another life and that is like really beautiful and it does you know and it's written with a different in a different in a different medium excuse me for each chapter it's very original the blown the bone clocks has some singularity to it you know cloud atlas even though it's so cool that it ends in the middle of the chapter and it's this huge timeline we don't get very much with each character even though every character is the same character we're almost getting like he, he uh, mitchell got the idea for cloud atlas from once once a winter's night once in a winter's night a traveler by italio Italio, Italio Calvino and in that book Calvino starts off every single chapter of the book like it's the first chapter of a book there are 20 first chapters of books in once a winter's night a traveler and it's really bad it's, it's a really good book because each first chapter is an imitation of a great author and they are so good you want to keep reading the first chapter of these books are great but they are unfinished and you can't get another one and between each story you are talked to in the second person by Italio Calvino himself who's searching for a book that he wants that he wants to show you but he keeps finding these and he's like no not this one but it's it's a really bizarre book but that's the inspiration for cloud atlas but so at some level every single story in cloud atlas supposedly has this thread and i believe it does but it's really only a short time with all the characters and bone clocks is something similar there are a lot of time jumps there's a lot of frag the characters may go missing for a couple hundred pages then make a reappearance you know there are a lot of things that are happening but i actually think that the bone clocks by david mitchell is his best book and putting cloud atlas at number two on the list i have done it let me know your guys's list down below let me know where i went wrong i'm sure some people i know there's some ghost ridden fanatics out there and they're gonna say how could you ever put that at number seven but that's what we are doing today and if you guys would like to see my review of utopia utopia avenue go check that out over over there peace